Okay, we are in there. So we were, so yeah, so we're in the so first day in the room, <clears throat> getting ready. I'm confronting this guy. He runs out. <clears throat> the drill sergeant comes in. And yeah, I, I don't have to go through, I don't want to go through the whole details. That's kind of the book. But um, to just understand that uh, I really, really, got, really, really uh, stood out. I was really, really standing out. This was the taboo thing to do. And uh, I, but on the way, I have to say this, the drill sergeant feigned like he didn't know what was going on. And he made every, until everybody said, I didn't see anything, I didn't see anything. So then he's walking out the room. So he's like, you know, after he, he berates Jones, he's like, go, run down there and go, go get your, hurry up. You know, so Jones had to run down and go get his, his linen and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and on the way out the room, uh, McDowell, sorry to McDowell was mumbling to, you know, he was talking to himself, but he wanted us to hear it, you know? And so he's like, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, I hear you. You're good. So he said, uh, he was like, damn shame. Big old, big old boy, like Jones getting pumped by a lightweight, like Howard, you know, or, or Amaro, I'm just going to say Amaro just to keep it, you know, keep it. Uh, right. He said, yeah, big old, he said, it's a damn, damn shame. Big old boy like Jones getting punked by a lightweight like Amaru. He's like, what's the world coming to? And he walked out and every, we all just fell out laughing. But I remember that was my key that, yo, these guys ain't no joke. That should have been. That should have been my key. Like, yeah, they, they, they ain't stupid, man. They, they, they know what time it is. You ain't the first mm -hmm. wise guy coming off, you know, off the truck. But, uh, you know, you know, you're young. I'm young. So that's how I got introduced. You know what I'm saying? After that cattle coming off the cattle truck, I'm the last guy getting off. And then I follow it up with that. <laughs> saying, okay, so I mean, so so you understand, like it wasn't going very well. Right. It, was, it wasn't going very well. You know what I'm saying? But to be honest, that wasn't your fault either. You know, you was trying to yeah. be cordial about it, and he just go call you a bitch, you know. <laughs> like, damn, okay. But when I look back on it, I, I realized probably what happened was Jones was a, he was a, you know, he's a mama's boy. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was pampered, you know, cause he was, you know, he was kind of, you know, okay. I don't want to go too far. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. he wanted to be on with the white guys a little bit more than the brothers. Let's put it that way. And right. um, he, you know, I was, I was a character. I was, I'm in reception center. I'm getting ready to get in fights. And, uh, and also uh, McCown, this was a white dude who was, in our, he, he had, you know, I was going to fight McCown. That was the only one that stood out because he and I were really at odds. Mm -hmm. And he was the only dude who I looked at. I was like, oh, he really want to fight. He really want to fight. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm a wise guy. He'd have beat my ass because I'm, I'm not taking it seriously. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling, acting all saucy. He was mad. And, and he... And McCown was one of two guys that I knew of in our in our who made it known that their fathers were clan members. Yeah, I would say he was a, he was a outwardly damn redneck. So you could tell he ain't like no black folks. He probably ain't even like anybody who wasn't supposed to be white. But check this out. I ain't like I couldn't stand that mug either. So but the other dude, <laughs> Jacob, he was the because so McCown was the second second squad leader that was my squad mm -hmm. and so i'm don't think so think about this i'm getting ready to fight him the day we're leaving to go too basic he and i are squared off and then three hours later he becomes my squad leader so the challenges are, are really piling up <laughs> yeah. the challenges are really piling up it's, 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 the deck is stacked against me um but check this out. And like I said, for something miraculous like this to, to occur for me to not even, like I said, not get kicked out, whatever. He and I became not friends, but we had a really good respect for each other by the end of basic. And, mm -hmm. and it turned out when his girlfriend um, and when everybody came at the end, all y'all with, with family, all y'all. Um, <laughs> yeah. His, his fiance was half Japanese. Oh, word. And I remember, yo, the shock when she spoke Japanese to me, yo, and we looked at each other, it was like, yo, it was like, yo, we didn't like each other. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, we really, you know, cause uh, during the bivouac, 
they that was the last test. They made us uh, be partners. We had to sleep in the same tent. We had to do guard duty together, and we really got to talking. Mm-hmm. Because we, you know, he wasn't gonna get. We both realized he, neither one's gonna try to get kicked out at this point. You know what I'm saying? We in the last right. week, this yep. is the last. You know what I mean? And uh, and the drills were making jokes about it and everything. You know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, that's something else you can read at in the book. How that kind of occurred, and he actually really looked me out when it came down to it. He really, really looked looked me out, man. That's what I, the irony. Mm-hmm. You know, the irony, because he really had walked away from the clan. He didn't that he didn't. That's what everybody didn't know. He told me that when we were talking, his father and him were at odds because he had got with this Japanese chick. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but he didn't tell me that at that point. I didn't know until I met her. But it all made sense, you know. But um right. but I want to say this. Uh um, so yeah, so this is everything was stacking up against me. Then I do the whole, I'm not gonna do nothing in the morning. I'm sleeping <laughs> on the ground. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, okay. Anything you want to say? No, that I, I didn't know that. Uh, you thought this was your squad leader, right? Yeah, McCown was my squad leader. Okay. No, I was thinking of a drill drill sergeant that was, uh, what was his name? He was a damn, I didn't know that dude, but the, the, the damn, you know who it was because we talked about his name is Kates or something like that, man. I could see his face, but I can't remember his name. Oh, why, why dude? Yeah. Uh, Yates. That's it. Yeah. yeah he was a third. He was a third, third right. platoon. He had the face. He always wore real faded. It right. Almost looked like yeah. what, they looked like the urban ones almost. They were so faded. Yeah. I, I ain't like that. You could tell I, the that's I was mistaken, Jacob, when I said I didn't like him. That's who it was. Yates. I ain't like that dude, man. He was. You could tell if he could have ran us all over with a truck, he would have did it. Yo, he punched me. He punched me, man. He did? Yeah, he punched me. He tried to punch me in my windpipe. Because mm-hmm. uh, at the end of uh, basic, remember, if you if you get caught talking, we weren't allowed to, in basic, you can't talk during meals. But, you know, like prison, you know, you you you, you get good at it. Uh, you know, not moving your <laughs> mouth and, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Under your breath. But you got to always maintain the whereabouts of the drills. Right. They right. God, they God in basic. And um, right. so if you got caught talking, do you remember what they used to do? Uh, I think we had to get out of the, unless I'm confusing. I know in the Marine Corps, if you got caught ch- talking at the char, they made everybody get out. That was it. Uh, See, that's a more extreme version. Uh, Cause you know, in the army, they're just set into a schedule. They got to get you to eat during that time. Right, you know what I'm saying? right. So they used to make I us. I don't remember. They used they would make us get up and uh in, go in front of the, the chow hall, where you know, in front of their table, which was in the front, and we had to sing the army song. Oh yeah, that's right, the army hymn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah they make you get up and sing that thing. You, know, you want to talk? Oh, you want to talk? Okay, you want to talk? So right. get up here, yeah. get up here. Yeah, you know, and sometimes they'd have like four or five dudes singing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and it becomes entertainment, you know. So anyway, they were singing, this is, and we were going to graduate. It was the last day before we were going to graduate. They had guys singing up there. And when they got done, I yelled, one more time. I remember that. (laughs) And everybody was laughing. Everybody laughed. You know, I'm I'm, I'm the comedian. And and he, Yates comes up, who who said that? Who said that? Who said that? And, um. And nobody's saying nothing. He goes, now nah, we're together now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So all the people getting kicked out got kicked out. Right. And so we're going to graduate. So we're like together. And, um, but he starts making separating us. He's like, yo, oh, for, you know, nobody said it. We'll all do PT. We get out of there. And everybody's like, yeah, hey, we, we're <laughs> probably going to do that anyway. Like, but then he started saying, oh, tomorrow when your wives and your family come, and you want to get that pass after graduation? No, ain't gonna be no grad, no pass. You gonna get your butt back in the barracks. We gonna GI the barracks and do PT. And he started and yo, and all of a sudden I started seeing people started looking at me. <laughs> then, cats were like, you know, they wouldn't look like they were because you know, they were not looking at me at all. Then all of a sudden everybody started like looking over at me like, um, you gonna say it or am I? And right. but this is what I'm saying. McCown was sitting right across from me. And McCown kicked me and was like, he was like, don't, don't say anything. And, uh, and all the white boys followed him. 
know what I'm saying? I'm not saying all the brothers followed me, but they were down with me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, so I was like, wow. But uh, I wasn't going to, I couldn't do that. I was like, yeah, I, I knew I didn't have no family coming. You know what I'm saying? I had no family coming. I used to think about you. So uh, I, I, I stood up and went over there. And when he came over there, he was like, uh, yeah, he got real close to me. You think you're funny? And he punched me. He hit me. And yeah. he wanted me to gasp. But when he got close, mm -hmm. to me, I had already tensed up. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of smiled at him. And that got him. And he stepped up off me. And um, but he when he went outside, he 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 tried to, to dog y'all out. Mm, yeah. Like, you, you remember how and I was like, uh, he 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 was getting ready, he said, uh, he was bringing y'all back after doing push-ups. I was like, drill sergeant, I, I don't think that I don't you know for the you know the a crime that I committed, I I, I don't think that the the punishment was enough. I, I think that you know. You know, I think they, they deserve a little bit more. I think I what I did deserves a little bit more push-ups, man. And, you know, I remember cats were looking at me real far. I was like, hey, when y'all you, had me by myself, I do a lot more than that. I do a lot more <laughs> than that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. I did more push-ups than anybody. I should know. And, and let's get to that. Because right. that's what, you know, book two, book two is is uh, really about that. Um, and let me just... Uh, I had a, a couple more events that really made me stand out. One was in the morning, it was cold. And so I decided I was gonna wear my field jacket and nobody else had a field jacket. Do you remember that? For this was what, uh, just regular formation or for PT? No, it was regular formation. And um, and I, I thought I was smarter yeah. than everybody. I don't remember the whole occurrence, but I remember when you came out and you was the only one that had it on. And, and I was like, it's cold, man. Fuck, I'm not, you know, white boy. I ain't, no, I don't care. This is this some slavery shit. I know nah, I'm putting on. And, but what I was really trying to do is I was like, I don't got to follow the rules. I do whatever I want. And that's the message I was trying to give y'all because I thought I was on some crusade. And, um, and y'all were like, you especially were like, yo, what are you doing, man? And I was like, nah, man. And I didn't say nothing, but see, what I thought was the day before we had some kind of barracks in frack, we didn't clean the barracks good enough. So we, after the formation, they, they, they sent us back in the barracks. So I was just going, I wanted to just wear it for the first formation until I got warm. And then I was going to go back and take it off because, you know, it's dark. It's like five, it's, it's, it's before sunrise. They right. can't, you can't tell this from the only thing is that little collar up here. Right. They can't yep. tell that I'm like, I just think I'm smarter than everybody. So and they, <laughs> they didn't, they didn't, they didn't see it. They were like, um, whole formation, the barracks, and they, they were, the bar okay, just you got it together. And I was like, got it together. We're not going back in the barracks. And I remember, I never forget, he was like, you know, when he said, attention, ride, haste, I was like, Oh no, oh no, we're leaving. And we started marching, man. And I was like, yo, and everybody started laughing. Everybody around me was laughing at me. They were laughing. They were laughing under their breath. And I was like, <laughs> oh shit, what am I gonna do? And I was like, I was trying to take the I was trying to unbutton it and take it off. I, in my mind, I'm thinking I can just take it off and throw it. But you they're watching you. You're you're, you're marching. You can't. Yeah, you go stand out. Yeah, you know, and I'm and I'm I'm not even on the one of the, um, if I was like in your squad, maybe you're on the outside. I got to throw it yeah. over somebody. It, it ain't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm right. in the front, so I'm going to throw where the drill sergeant is. I had to be in your squad. And um, uh, long story short, man, when I got caught with that, and that, this is all like in the first week. This is all like in the first week. And and, and, um, <laughs> and that's when uh, the drill sergeant, and they didn't catch me until like 11 o'clock. They didn't man. see it the whole time, man. We went to some class and I was hiding from them. And every time we had a break, I would stand behind somebody. Like I would always stand. I wouldn't give them a clear shot. Right. Make sure you blocked. But finally I got, I got, I forgot. And I remember Dunbar and Odin started slap boxing. And we were like, yeah, we all doing all this during a break. And, mm -hmm. the, and uh, Drill Sergeant Sunchin and Maldonado. The Mexican dude and the Filipino, they both short. They come over, yo, they come over and walk right past 
them dudes slap boxing. Because, you know, as soon as they came, everybody, you know, Eddie, Eddie. They walked right past him and walked right over to me and got right on both sides of me. It was like, yeah. what the hell is this? Oh, man. And, and the fact that they knew I had been wearing it for four hours, <laughs> four or five, you know, it, 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 right. you know, it probably oh, wasn't that late. It was probably like eight. It was probably like eight. You know, remember it was so early, but it was yeah. hours. It was it had been a couple hours because I was sweating. Everybody was laughing at me because it was hot now. Right. And um and yo man and and um they 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 I, first I had to wear the jacket the whole day. I think it was all hot. They made me roll in mud and 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 anyway. <laughs> like, now now this is my second time meeting the Sunshine, right? Uh, Sergeant Sunshine, and so right. this was the moment he locked on to me, though. He locked on to me. Um, so I want to fast forward. You remember when Sergeant McDowell, his father? So could we okay? Then we had three drills, right? Mm-hmm. You had the guy. What was his name? Lav, I'll call Lavadier or something. Yeah, He's he was the, I, the most senior one. Yeah, he was. You're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was. So he was an FSC. You're right. And then there was two E sixes. One was white and one was black. Lavadier was like Canadian or some shit. He had like that Canadian French name, French Canadian name, I think. The one white dude, he was a giant man. He was like six nine. Yeah, his name wasn't um, his name McCloud or something no, no, like no, that. No, 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 no. The brother was uh, McDowell. And you reminded me of that. I had forgotten his name. Right. I no. remember McDowell. No, you know what's funny? If I look at the name I have in the book form, it's close to it. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, man, I can't believe I can't get it. I can see him vividly, but if we go on talking, it'll come to me. But um, yeah. So he, I, so I have a fire history of both of them. But when we first got there, I don't know if you noticed this, but the black drill sergeants pretty much addressed the black privates. The white drill sergeants didn't really address, at least they didn't address me. And when I looked, I was watching it because fights could break out that first. You know, they don't really know who each other are. So the, you know, I guess that's probably part of their training. Mm-hmm. But I remember McDowell was up on me, you know, from after that first day with the fight, I'm getting ready to fight the dude. So they, cause he, so he started calling me Billy Badass after that. Yeah. <laughs> they used to always call me Billy Badass, you know? And, um, but so McDowell was on me and he was a big six foot, were you like six two? He was like, well, you think he was like 220? He, I think maybe six three, man. Yeah, he was. He was. He, he was kind of. He guy. was kind of towering. Yeah, towering yeah. over us. Yeah. Yeah, and he and and he so he fit the the drill sergeant mold, mm-hmm. you know. So I so he had me at bay. I was like, okay, I ain't really trying to challenge him, especially after that first day. But something occurred about two weeks into training that changed everything, because uh, you know he, his father passed away. Mm-hmm. And so he comes out, I remember in the morning, he was almost like, almost like, 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 I guess his father passed away, but he was also like apologizing to us. Like, I have to miss training. You know, I take this very seriously. That's when I started to realize maybe this is not a game. You know, this is not a game. These guys, this is, their, this is really their lives. I'm like, oh, oh, this ain't just something you do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so he leaves and they don't fill his spot. So now we have two drills, but one, there's no black drill sergeant. Mm-hmm. And so we have the guy Lavadier. He's you know, he's the nice guy, and then we have the other guy, Sergeant. Um. Ah, Lord, okay. Anyway, um, he Wingo, but he was in third or no, second. Wingo squad, was the brother, the the stock, the cop right. diesel guy in third. It was yeah, I remember he the sung, name. Was, he sung good cadence and stuff. Yeah, real good cadence. Like his cadence. <laughs> and he was real funny, man. Real funny, man. He used to crack on. Oh man, he was real funny. It, so the, it was three, it was Wingo, Asuncion, and Yates in the third. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was R3, Lavadier, the only, McDowell, and... That tall white dude, Yeah, man. yeah. I can't remember his name. And the first platoon, it was Maldonado. He was Mexican. You know, it was the guy that couldn't talk. Remember, he was he couldn't talk. He used to like, he was, uh, he was, he was probably the nicest out of everybody. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember him. He was like, he was... Arab or something. He was like Middle Eastern or something. Okay. And then they had another dude. See, I don't even remember them that much because I, I was always uh, because of Asuncion because I was the right. third. So McDowell, <laughs> McDowell, sorry, McDowell, he leaves. That night, I shit you not. Okay, we had a crew called the City Crew. Right. All the black dudes who thought they were cool, who kind of were, were had little, had egos. <laughs> 
we all hung out together and we thought we were larger than life and we thought we were running shit. And uh, right. Hawk, Hawk wasn't a member. Hawk wasn't a member. <laughs> And I, I ain't want no parts of that. No, he, I yeah, was like I said, graduate boot camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the dudes who had parental guidance, the guy, that, that was the difference. They, they, they didn't feel the need to be tough. You know, we were trying to be tough and, you know, we thought we were this, that, and the other. But we did do some positive things. We did do some positive things. I'm, I hope like, I come to that, man. We, we, used to, we used to have contraband meetings. Like we would actually have meetings and we'd be like, we're going to meet. We weren't allowed to have meet. That was against the rules. So we would, we had, so we had to, decided like five minutes before so and we would say if we would have meeting we would say in such and such as room you you did we ever do it in your room no nah. okay. i came i came one time uh to y'all to to there i don't remember what we talked about but i did i said yeah. let me go hang out with these brothers over here i got tired of hanging with the white boys you know because that's and, all and, i had in my room <laughs> and, and so we would go in the rooms and be like yo y'all gotta get out and you're like get out and we would just hit we would just our farm bow 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 we, and they, oh, they, 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 they leave, you know what I'm saying? And we, 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 we got to do this now. We ain't trying. This is not a debate. <laughs> you're going to leave. <laughs> you're, you're going to leave now. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I know what you thought. You'd be writing letters. To your, you can do that in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> it's our room. <laughs> <laughs> and we would have no y'all y'all didn't do that in my room i would have remembered that <laughs> yeah because there yeah. was dudes because in the, in the beginning there were dudes in there that didn't like you and and uh and uh or you know because you know you know that stupid he country he country you know because i used to crack the most country jokes on me so even right, you know, right. I, to me you was country <laughs> as hell he was country <laughs> as hell and um and um but i remember i almost you know i almost got in a fight with this guy i was like and that's probably after you Maybe that's when you came. Maybe you might even said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to the meeting or whatever. But I remember the guys, <laughs> some guys were flexing like on some fraternity shit. He's like, he ain't in the meeting. I was like, yo, that's my boy. And and um, I was looking for a reason to do something for you because you had done so much for me. So that guy, as soon as he said something, I was like, what? <laughs> oh, this is going to be easy. Right. You know, I was like, what? What'd you say? You know, you remember I was real quick to start to the violence. I didn't, I wasn't trying mm -hmm. to look cool. I really had problems. You know what I'm saying? But, um, so I want to go back. So McDowell, his dad leaves. I mean, his dad passes away. He leaves. Mm -hmm. That night in the showers, we're laughing, the city crew. We're being loud about it. How we're going to take over. Are we going to run these white boys? We were talking shit like that. Like, oh man, we ain't doing shit. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> We go, man, we're going to have these, these boys running around in circles. And we were going into BRM at the moment. This is this is significant in, for the book and for basic. BRM, basic rifle marksmanship. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a must. You, no matter how good you are, if you cannot shoot, you cannot be in the Army. I don't care how, yeah, computer, how computery your job is. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so it's a must. Everybody knows it. Everyone's looking forward to it. They issue us our weapons. We don't shoot them for like a week. We just got to carry them around with us. They become, we hate them after a while. I'm trying to fast forward, right? Right, right. But uh, do you remember any, what, what, do you, what do you remember about this time? Uh, yeah, I remember us getting our weapons. Like you said, I remember us, them trying to teach us how to drill with them to do different um, uh, maneuvers. Right. Uh, exercise with them, slept with them, all yep, kinds of everything, yeah. it, it, giving them names, all of that yeah. corny crap. And then uh, <clears throat> we headed out to uh, the rifle range. We used to walk out there, well, hump, yeah. you know, we used to hump out to the, the range every, uh, every day for our sessions. We didn't stay out there. Marine Corps, we humped to the range like 15 miles and then we stayed out there for two weeks. In the Army, we I think we just went back and yeah. forth each day. So this is why you don't even remember this because again, right after he did something even more trying. Well, with the ex again, with the exception of going into the uh, boot camp in the Marines, I would say it had to be a lot easier because the whole trauma thing, the whole first initiation thing, was already broken. You know, even though it was, maybe it was more extreme, it was longer. But it still was similar conditions. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. No. You have no control. Right. No, <laughs> so instead, that that's just the same at all. Level, you, know? <laughs> you have no control. 
and it was even more stringent. You yeah, know, I like figure these meetings and shit, y'all. That shit was not gonna happen, man. Nah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, them drill instructors was just waiting for a minute to jump on your ass. I and I'm I don't mean like yell, yeah, they were oh, you think you bad? Okay, they had you know okay, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, yeah, sorry. That's, that's no, I, we, yeah. we went to the range and we started our marksmanship training. Okay, and this is important too. So the first day we're going in, and first we're gonna sit in a class, they're gonna teach us about, you know, they gotta give us all the the ballistics about the, the weapon we're sitting out in front of the, in front and there uh, you know we have like 10 minutes to, to kill so we're sitting there and uh, terrio sergeant terrio that was his name that's it there you yeah. go yeah the giant six yeah. nine yeah so right. he's a big yeah six foot four six foot five uh skinny no, white this dude. dude was like six nine man no he wasn't that you. tall he wasn't that tall yeah nah, he was bad he was big, dude was... <laughs> yeah. okay skinny dude long neck had like a brownish red hair, but he looked like a classic redneck, had a southern draw. Yeah. And um, so now Sergeant McDowell's gone. So he's kind of assuming um the major spokesman duties. Like right. you know, the, the Lavadier was the was the head, but you know, that's why he has him doing everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, so he suddenly turns into a stand-up comedian. And he starts telling these jokes to us, you know, we're out in front waiting. And for some reason, I'm offended. I'm like, <laughs> everybody's laughing and I'm like, and so I put on my meanest look. I'm, I'm challenging him. Like, I'm clear. I'm like, like, for what? I don't even, you know, because I just, I was offended that I'm like, well, you trying to be our friend now? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm totally confused as to what's going on. I'm everybody is my father, right? I'm still fighting this this fight, you know, with it, with my father. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, yo, so halfway through, he's I don't know if you remember this. He's like a. Uh, oh, it seems like uh, Private Amaru doesn't really think my jokes are funny. <laughs> and he's like, well, may maybe he can come up here. Maybe he has better jokes. So he's trying to bring me in, like. You know, okay, no, no, we're chilling right now, you know, but I'm not getting it. I'm just like totally like on code, I'm thinking. And I said, well, Joe Sergeant, maybe I can, but maybe I came to basic to be a soldier, not a stand-up comedian. <laughs> and everybody got quiet. Like I dissed the hell out of him. Mm -hmm. And I expected him to make... I wanted to do push-ups. I was like, I don't want, I don't want to just sit here and I don't want to do this. Make me do some push-ups, man. That's what I'm used to now. You know, and he and he didn't say anything. He looked at me. All right, let's get ready to go in the classroom. And I was like, wow, really? He gonna just let that go? And I'm like, that was my indication that he was a punk. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know until I wrote the book that. That was, I had signed my 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 death certificate. <laughs> he was like, okay, we're gonna get him out of here. We're we gonna filter him out. He ain't gonna be here in a minute. Yeah. Okay, so we we go, we're going through BRM. Now, do you remember this? This is what I really want to know. You remember I couldn't hit anything. Right. You remember this? Because maybe not. Yeah, no, I, I remember. Because I remember. Because yeah. it was like uh you I mean I I shot. I was okay, but you was like, "Damn, man, how were they going?" I was worried. I didn't want to see you fail. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, we, we, you was my boy at that point, and I was like, "Damn, man, I hope you get it." And you, you was just, you know, even a function came over. we trying to help you with your weapon and stuff. He was, "God damn it, Howard, this how you do it?" You know what do you do? You know he was on you. He was trying to help you. Nah, nah, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so you don't know. Um, I didn't really put it together until I wrote the book. Well, you I, told me about that. I remember I that. You. Okay. Yeah. But I'm saying I didn't know it happened at the time. I just remember all week long you was having problems. Yeah. But I man, never when it came, I when never it came hit a time to yeah. No, all I never week. think about the whole week. Everybody, every day they're coming back. Yeah, I, I hit this, I did that, and I'm sitting there quiet. And um and in, in the army. If you fail at anything, they embarrass the hell out of you. Yeah. So they put you in these remedial classes. 
that take place when everybody else is chilling. Mm -hmm. And the drill sergeant does stand up with you. Here comes the retarded crew. You know, they, you know they, <laughs> these, are, these are the special ed people and everybody take a look at them. They make us eat last. We mm -hmm. got to wait. Let the real soldiers go first. You know, and you, you can't even imagine how important child time is. You just can't even, yeah. you can't even imagine unless you've been locked up or you've been in, in the military. And um, so my self-esteem, my confidence is really, really going like, is taking hits. Because I thought I was going to be good at shooting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't exaggerate. I did not hit not one target. So about halfway through, I started complaining. I said, no, something's wrong with my gun. Something's wrong with my weapon. You couldn't call it a gun. Something's wrong with my weapon. Right. And um, because I was seeing the dirt fly up. Mm -hmm. So I started trying to aim according to the dirt. And I, I swear to God, <laughs> I was almost getting it. Mm -hmm. So long story short, my sights were, were, were not set. And right. another thing that let me know is because the first day I, I'll complain, like you said, Asuncion was on me. Mm -hmm. But after that, he left me alone. And that confused me. Oh, and also, the, the time is going to run out again. But before before it does, um, yeah, we're going to have to I'll probably stop. Um, I want to just say it's 7, 713 and count. Okay, you can see it. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's up at the top. All right, so let's try to at least finish finish this. Mm -hmm. I, I, found, I went too far. The day after when, when Sergeant McDowell's father uh, passed, after he left and we were in the showers clowning, mm -hmm. the next morning when we got in, in formation, this was the first morning that we got two drills. And we we're like, yeah, we getting ready to get him. Sergeant Sunshin, he in the now he, he in the third platoon. He's not my drill sergeant. Right. He walks over. Do you remember this? Maybe because you're in you you're you're we're in two different squads, so you, you might not have been that close. He walks over to me and he looks at me and he knew everything we said. I don't know how he knew. He was like, You think mm -hmm. this is gonna be some kind of game? You think you're gonna take over? He's like, No, I'm gonna be on your ass. He said, I'm gonna be on you. He wasn't looking at nobody else, and he pointed right at me. He was like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be on you. You think you this, that, and the other, we gonna see. And I was like. And I'm still making jokes. I'm like, ain't you supposed to be over there? You know, I'm like, you know, whenever he let me talk, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm going back and forth like that. But whenever he mm -hmm. let me speak, I had a wisecrack. Mm -hmm. and, and I opened, I had it in the military, you know, the, the, yeah. private, the private, you know, request permission to speak, you know, when he let me speak, aren't you supposed to it be? Was, it was tactful. Room? Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> I couldn't get kicked out, but they were, they, you know, they were like, oh, you think you, you think you bad. Okay. And so he, I, I had no idea how serious he was going to take this, folks. They, everybody in my, uh, Jackson, they all used to make jokes and they were like, yo, they were like, yo, Howie, Howie got his own, well, Amaru, Amaru got his own, he got his own private drill sergeant. He got a private drill sergeant. <laughs> and, and to the point where when they were, Odom and them, they, during the break, they'd like, no, we got to get away from you because we want to do, we want to have fun and, he gonna come over and we know he's gonna come over and see you. He's gonna watch whoever is with you. And one time I got you in the net. One time you got caught and we had to run back and forth. Remember, that was probably the only time you ever got in trouble because you were messing around with me and we at the chow hall and, and, and Sergeant Assumption made us run back and forth while everybody else is moving in the line. And I remember you left me. I was like, you was all ahead of me. I was like, yo, man, slow down, man. <laughs> He's a track star ass woman. I was like, <laughs> but you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you was out. We had to run back. You don't remember this, do you? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, we had to run back and forth. Yeah, and while everybody else was going, and then you know, after we were done, um, yeah. Okay, like I said, because you went to the Marines, <laughs> none of this wasn't as traumatizing for you. But I just want to, I want to bring this up. This guy, he saved me because mm -hmm. he knew. You know, I didn't know this, but he let me know later. He was a, a, a gang member in L.A. Yeah, because I guess, telling me that. Yeah, we were so close. We spent he spent so much time with me in the and he had me doing push-ups the whole time. And he would just talk to me. He would just talk to me, talk to me. And at first I would just make me angry. But then after mm -hmm. a while, he, he he learned how to calm me down. Because he mm -hmm. really after a while, he would just be doing stand-up. He would be cracking jokes on everybody. Yeah. 
I but know, everybody, I remember, he yeah, was a funny dude. Yeah, he would be cracking jokes on everybody, and he would have me laughing. But don't get me wrong, man, this was after he had got me to a certain place. He, he never, there wasn't no friendship going on. Right. I hated this guy. And he was on me. He was on me. And uh, I guess I'll we end with this. And just to bring that to a head. Um, and hopefully if I can get you one again, we'll talk about startup for BRM because that's mm-hmm. the real big story. And, and that and the PX. Got to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what was I just saying? Oh, man. He oh. had you doing push-ups. Oh, just to give you a, yeah, an example of uh, after I got my act together, it took me a couple of weeks and I, I started my standing started coming up amongst the guys when I started cleaning up. Mm-hmm. Once, once Jackson told me why I was getting the cold shoulder, he was like, you don't do nothing. You sit around here. What you think? And he would laugh at me because he, he knew I was so hard headed mm-hmm. that he had to tell it to me a certain way. If he would have been like, yo, you need to do this, that and the other. I'd have been like, yo, you corny ass. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do, you know, <laughs> this is right. how it was. So, um, but I remember after a week or so after I had started getting my act together, Sergeant Assumption was the CQ sergeant. CQ charge of quarters means that he's the one that stays overnight. So I know the Marines, they probably be sleeping with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Right. So at one in the morning, he calls formation. And he's like, as is, don't put on a jacket. Don't put on a, 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 a nothing. So we had to, it's like, it's, so it's, it's, um, it's like, like now, it's almost like no, I'm a little bit earlier than now. It's like October, though, like the beginning of October. Mm-hmm. It's cold, man, at one in the Hell morning. Yeah. In Missouri. We're in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, by the way. So we're outside, you know, and then you know, Tanchan, you can't do none of this. You gotta stand up. Do you, you don't remember this, do you? No, nah, I don't. Man, yeah, see, this is Marines. Yeah, you, you it's all wiped out. This is not traumatizing you. <laughs> he, he called a formation, and we're all like, what is this? And then he gets out and starts just talking like like shooting the shooting the breeze with us, mm-hmm. and everybody you could hear a murmur like what? So he's like, yeah, uh, the reason I called you out here is I, f- I forgot to do something today. So um, what can anybody guess what I forgot? And then nobody says nothing. Everybody's like, what? This is what you called us for? And he <laughs> has this real nice voice. And then he switches back to a drill sergeant voice. He's like, nobody goes inside until. Until you until you answer it, so then of course everybody starts answering, you know. And if, if you said something stupid, he would drop you. We got mm-hmm. one minute. I got to finish this. And um, like I remember, McCown was like, uh, "You forgot to say uh, tell your wife you loved her." And he's like, "Nope, not married to a woman, married to the army." But good guess. So he didn't have to do push-ups. And finally, after everybody guessed, he's like, "No, no. What I forgot was, I forgot to drop my favorite private today." And everyone starts laughing, but everybody knows that means me. He's like, Robert, 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 how? He, he calls me up. He sits me down in front of the door and makes me do push-ups and says to everybody else, you have five minutes to get back into your beds. If you're out of your beds after that, we're going to come back out here and do PT. He releases the formation, fall out. Everybody has to run over me. And n- dudes are kicking me. And after he got in the room, he told me, he was like, you were such an asshole. If you're going to make a comeback, they 